Well, one day it's Thursday, August 18, 2022, and this is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you, A, finding the show, and B, taking ta time out of your busy schedule. If you're watching this on YouTube, daylearner.com slash webinar, you can register once and hopefully for all, as long as I remember to add in shows. And I do have shows going into 2023. Just register once, even if the link or the date is old. So we're going to focus on, well, obviously, current market conditions as usual, your questions on trading. And uh, live uh, stock and crypto picks, let me know what your favorite ones are when we get to the live charts. And uh, so what are we going to focus on this week? Well, I woke up thinking about another one of those secrets to trading. That's not really a secret. It, and some of the stuff really dovetails in with a lot of things that I talked about over the last week or so. Uh, crypto, is crypto continuing to wake up? It was kind of waking up. I, I went out on a limb and said, you know, I think we have a bottom in Bitcoin, but I think it's more of a process than an event, which is fine. And, and that's actually much, much, much better. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often sum it up. All pictures about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. That's from my buddy, Greg Morris. All right. Another one of those secrets to trading that's not a secret. Acceptance. I always tell you there's no secret to trading. And then I'm like, well, maybe there is. But a lot of this stuff is is common knowledge and it's not common knowledge until and unless you're in the trenches trenches and that'll make sense in one minute now one thing i was thinking about along the lines of acceptance and i'm going to touch upon some of the things we talked about last week like a lot of people they come into to my methodology which is trend following which is a lot like any other trend following methodology as i'm going to flesh out in a few seconds and they lose in the first one or two trades and then they quit and that's it they're done well, it takes a lot longer than one or two trades. Now, on the flip side, sometimes people come in, first three or four trades hit it out of the park. They think it's always going to be this great. That's that's actually a worse problem to have. My best clients, as I preach, come in, get chopped up a little bit, and then do really well. I think it chopped up a little bit and said, aha, this is part of that process. But I'll, I'll get back to that in just one second. But one thing you really have to accept is that with volatility comes opportunity. And one thing you do have to accept is a bumpy ride. Now, I wanted to take a look at a couple of the winners from the portfolio, and these are the more volatile ones, the HVs and the 100 plus. And you can see that we rallied up to the initial profit target, and this is based on a 100K account. And I did show actual trades here last week, and also, if you check my website, there's an update for the my next 100 trade series that I've been doing with stockcharts.com. But anyway, so we got $1,000 banked on that. That's that's good, right? And notice our stop gets brought up to break even when that occurs. So now we're free rolling, so to speak. And then a few days later on the remainder, we were up 1386. Now remember, to keep the math easy, I use a hypothetical 100K account. And I do have one account that I, I do try to mimic the service the best I can. If I say buy, 1600 shares i'll go and buy 1600 shares in that account just to show you that i really do it and it really works over time not all the time as i preach but anyway a couple days later we're up 1386 so in 100k that open position has 1.4 round numbers percent gain for the overall portfolio take 1.386 divided by 100k that comes to 1.4 percent again round numbers gains now the next day the stock comes back in and you only have 920 dollars so now you went from 1.4 percent down to about 0.9 percent so you can see just this one little stock in a portfolio can make a huge difference so that's a loss of 466 dollars or about a half a percent a little bit less than a half percent a couple of days later, begins to rally, or the next day, I should say, begins to rally. So at 68.88, that's a pretty big swing. That's a $768 swing, 0.7%, about, yeah, let's say three quarters percent, again, round numbers. And that's a decent move, and that's a pretty big swing over a day. So that's what, uh, again, yeah, three quarters of a percent swing in the entire portfolio based on that one little rally there. Now, if you were to look at your account at the absolute peak a few days ago, 
it was $2,816 worth of gains. And then what's ha what happens? Well, it makes a pullback. And when you're sitting there watching it, it's really, really painful. But if you just were looking at charts, like let's look at the charts tonight, I saw Riot come up. I'm like, that's a good looking stock. That's a pullback. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's right. We're already in it. But anyway, the pullback is kind of painful because you went back down to being only up 11.52 on the remainder. Now we did book a thousand, okay, and that kind of smooths out the portfolio a little bit longer term. So you're up one whole percent on the portfolio based on what you booked, and then your open risk is based on your open profits once you nail that initial profit target. But you can see that's a pretty big drop if you're going peak to trough, okay, 1,664. And I think the reason, or one of the reasons that got me thinking about this was Verve, which was another one of the stocks that we're long that's pretty volatile. He, uh, thinking of adding above 908 on uh, Riot. Uh, yeah, that sounds good, 908, sure. Um, it's a little aggressive, but if you're doing an add back trade, I actually, I like the way you think, George. I actually put in an order the other day uh, not in the account that I'm tracking, like my tracking trades for the stock charts project, but in another account, I actually put in an order to put some shares back on to swing trade around that swing uh, swing trade around that longer term core position. So what George is doing is, let's say you get in here, okay, you take your partial profits and everything, and it sets up again. So let's say you put on, let's just do it round numbers. I think it was 1,600 shares, but let's just do 2,000, do round numbers, okay? So you long 2,000 shares, you flip out 1,000 shares, okay? So now you went from two to one, and then when it pulls back, you put that 1,000 shares back on, okay? And then it'll rally, if it rallies back up, let's say you look for about a point and a half on this one, the old highs around 10 and change or whatever, then you make $1,500 on that trade. Well, obviously, you are increasing your risk, but the, the idea is to go in and get a little piece for that, that swing trade once again, kind of a rinse and repeat. Now I'll do that personally, and it did the service, I'll point out when they're set up. And, and if I don't point it out, just look in the Landry list every day, and you'll see Riot is in today's Landry list, meaning that it's once again set up. But yeah, uh, good job, George, I like the way you think. A little bit more advanced technique. I, I know you're still wrapping your head around a lot of this stuff, but uh, you know, you're know you're diving in with both feet, That's that's awesome. All right, anyway, Verb, another one of those volatile ones. And I think that's this is, again, where a lot of this thought for this presentation came from because I was watching Verb swing three or four points. Anyway, that was the original trade down here. Buy at 26, stop at 18, and IPT of 34. So eight points risk. And that's one thing I want to talk a lot about tonight as it relates to volatility. And... I get emails all the time. I, I can't risk 20% on a trade. It's like, well, if you look at the chart, 20% in a stock like this isn't that much. And like the ARLP was, I think, 25%. It was $4.89 with a 389 stop. And that's this one that's right here. I'm going to talk a little bit about that one in a minute. And I know some people that didn't take it because they couldn't take a 25% stop. Okay. Well, that's just what you don't like, okay? That's what you, what you're not accepting. And, and again, there, it comes back to acceptance. Accept the fact that this is a volatile stock and with volatility comes opportunity, okay? So be willing to risk 25% if that's what the stock calls for. Now, we back our shared size way down to compensate. Now, in this case, it's $2,000, 1.2,000 divided by one, okay? is 2,000 shares, but notice on the verb, we only had 250 shares, and that's on a 100K account. So account size 100K, and I just keep this at a hypothetical 100K at all times to make the math easy. 2% of that is 2,000 risk per trade, but that's if stopped out. So you take this number here and divide it by the risk, and that gives you the number of shares. This spreadsheet is available under members resources i get emails all the time from you guys if you just check under members resources if you look on your on the members page not the home page daveleonard.com but daveleonard.com slash i think members the your dashboard you should see members resources in that and some other uh goodies such as scans and all on that page so anyway this is what happened with the stock 
entry was there, stop down there, down here, and then it rallies up, triggers an entry. And here's the uh, trade. So what I did was I just rounded up in this particular account. If I tend to be slightly more aggressive in an account like this when I'm following the service. So if it's like 1,500 and change shares like the Riot or whatever one it was recently, some odd number, I'll just round it up. So I bought 50 extra shares on this one. And you could see that when it hit the IPT, the stop comes up to break even, and then we continue to trail it higher. So this stop here is based on this high close here, okay? And then we're not gonna trail that stop higher until and unless it closes above that high close. So at the IPT, we take $1,000, okay, a profit, we bank it. We're taking risk off. So, so the way the methodology works is risk on, risk off, risk on, risk off. And as I'm going to talk about a little bit in, in a minute, longer term trend following, the drawdowns and accuracy is abysmal. But if we can go in as a swing trader and then change hats to a longer term trader via the money and position management, then we're ahead of the game. We're once provided, of course, we catch the occasional home run, which, as I say often, comes comes along just often enough to keep you in the game. I guess if it came if they came along any more often, then it would all go to your head, right? But you can see at one point we were up sixteen hundred dollars intraday, at least on this one, and then at this low, which was pretty painful. But when I looked at the chart, I'm like, well, this just looks like a a bit of a correction, corrective type of movement. Didn't look like that big of a deal. But equity swing wise, it's fairly big, down to H13. So what's that, about uh, 1,600, uh, let's just say 0.8% loss on the entire account if you're looking at that low. Now, I was asked in an interview recently about how do I handle volatility and if you if you love volatility, volatility will love you. Just wrap your head around it and say, okay, well, this stock bounces around three and four and five points a day. I'm going to have to use an eight-point stop. I'm just going to have to live with it. Now, I know there are temptations, and I'm guilty as anyone, and I've done this before, and every now and then I'll do it again. You see something beginning to slide. You think, well, let me just bail out and then figure out a way to get back in by the end of the day. And every now and then you'll nail it and that'll work, but you're you're making too many decisions. You're much better off just letting things unfold. Now, again, you want to forget about the percentage stop and focus on what the chart calls for. Again, not to beat the dead horse in ARLP, but that one had about a 25% stop. I got emails from people. I can't take it. I can't. I can't use a 25% stop. Yes, you can. You could. You can do it. <laughs> so again, you want to adjust your share size accordingly. And I think the the ARLP is kind of a bad example because percentage-wise, it stops pretty big at one point. At least it was initially one point. But if you are using a one-point stop, that's 2,000 shares. 2,000 divided by one is 2,000. If you're using a 10-point stop, then you're only buying 200 shares. And a lot of our shorts coming off a high level, these with these stocks at high price, high levels, we end up only shorting like 150 or 200 shares per 100K. Now, one thing that'll make your life a lot easier, and I am guilty as anyone, that's why I said, I know, haha, is you want to reduce the number of observations. And I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of neurology. But just know that a negative observation makes you feel twice as bad as a positive observation. Now, let's back that out to the, to the end of the trade. Let's say you had a, a loss on a trade, you locked in a loss, okay? That feels really bad. If you lock in a gain on a trade, it feels good, but a loss has twice the emotional impact. And they've actually measured that on a chemical basis, neurology, uh, on a neurology basis and your brain and if you're watching your money go up and down watching that equity it will begin to make you sick and also remember as greg morris once pointed out markets only make new highs about four percent 
of the time, and I forget the guy's name, Robert Frey, I think. I get him confused with the jazz guitarist. What's his name? Robert Gay? No, Robert Gray. Uh, he might be gay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he is, though. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Not that, they, not that there's anything wrong with that. But again, what, what he pointed out, and one of you guys, actually one of you girls, sent me the video, and he pointed out that most of the time you're in a drawdown. And I did a lot of presentations on that about five or six years ago, or maybe even a little bit longer, where I talked about how you're almost always in a drawdown. And in trend following, you really spend a lot of your time giving up gains as opposed to making gains. And psychologically, that's hard. That's hard for people. Uh, some lady just quit the service recently, and she said it's not it's not her style. And I, and I didn't get into, uh, I didn't talk to her and ask her why, but I'm thinking to myself, well, what else are you going to go out there and do? If you're going to be a trend follower, it's going to have certain nuances, like I'm going to talk about in just one minute. If you're going to be a reversion to the mean trader, good luck. <laughs> but it's going to have a, a complete different set of nuances so one thing you need to look at is where are you now versus where you were and i have a chart that's going to really drive that point home in one minute now monetize if you must but monetize down to the stop don't look and say oh i'm up twenty hundred dollars get all excited look at that stop and say okay if i get stopped out i'm going to make about seven or eight hundred dollars in this trade i already made a thousand that's good so you know what, even if I get stopped out tomorrow, this is a winning trade. That's a good problem to have, right? And those, it's okay to give up those those gains. As I often say, uh, I I know I say this a thousand times. I, I, I swore I've never read those turtle books, but there were two that were pretty good. The, uh, the Way of the Turtle, I think, which I believe that was Curtis Faith wrote that. Larry McMillan recommended I read it. And, and so, I, of course, I read it. And it turned out to be pretty good. And there was another turtle book that was okay. It wasn't as good as that one. I'm trying to think. It escapes me at this time. And I know Covell is, is uh, he got a piggybacked on him or whatever you want to call him. And, and uh, I'm not as big a fan of that as like Curtis Faith, who was actually a turtle, uh, did it. But um, Curtis Faith, he, that's another story. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a character. Anyway, uh, he said that Dennis treated, Dennis and Eckert treated open profit drawdowns differently than open losses. They knew that it came with the territory. And that's the secret to trading is accepting all these things that are painful. And there's a lot of things that are painful in trading, believe me. So beating the dead horse on the ARLP, the entry was here at 489, stop was down here one point away. But look at the chart, that doesn't look that far away, right? That if it hits it, obviously the position has failed. And that's where your stop goes far enough away to where the setup would have failed after an entry. And then we took partial profits. Again, we're gonna take $1,000, okay, or 1%, and then we trail the stop higher on the remainder. Now, to those who aren't familiar with the money management or are new to this, uh, my system, the trailing and the stop, we let that gradually widen out over time. There's two ways we do that. One, keep the change. So if this stock goes up, you know, now that it's in the 20s, if it goes up 30 cents or or 20 cents or whatever, or 13 cents, it's just some small number, we won't bump that stop up. Now, the other thing we do is what I call gaining ground. So let's say we come in and this thing pops up three points overnight. Well, I might only bump that stop up two points, okay? So you're gaining ground with this trailing stop. George, were you not in the service when ALP triggered? George said, wow. Now here's something that kind of blew my mind. You can see right here, I took the partial profits, right? I got in at 494, took profits at 570, and it sold off 1,000. But here's something that blew my mind. Look at this, dividend, 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 dividend. Never in my life do I remember, well, okay, not never. A few times in my life, I've, I've been in these uh, momentum stocks and I've gotten like a three cent, like $3 dividend, you know, or whatever, you know, something so minuscule. But there was a lot of dividends on this thing. And, and hopefully, and I just said hope, but hopefully we're in this thing for a long, long time. 
Now I'm just noticing here tonight, I have another example where I have a better entry and a better exit on the IPT. So on this one, I've got 1,000 for the IPT. If you do the math on that, it's a little bit less than $1,000. I think uh, it's eh, like 750 or 800 or so. But I did take this across multiple accounts and I just happened to grab this. It was convenient to grab out of this one account here. But anyway, $1,400 worth of dividends. So that's $2,800, a couple hundred dollars less based on this trade here. Plus, as of when I took a snapshot earlier, and again, this stock's a little bit higher now, we had $19,000 in open profits. Now, here's the thing. What did I just say? Well, if you monetize down to the stop, okay, you're only going to make $14,000 on this trade. So, yeah, you're going to give up like $5,000 of open profits. And let me be frank, that sucks. It's going to suck. But you have to look at where you are net net. So 14K plus 3K round numbers, dividends, taking partial profits and all, you make $17,000. If I made $17,000 on every trade, especially if I did it in more than one account, but let's just say I just did it in one account on every trade, you might not see my fat ass again, right? So this is obviously a big winner. But I'll get emails from people bitching at me because they gave up $5,000 open profit. Well, if you're not willing to give up open profits, and I've done presentations before where I'll go in and show a chart like this, and I'll show every little open profit drawdown that you had along the way. And yeah, up here, you might make five or 600%, but along the way, it was kind of a bumpy ride, especially as that stock gets wider and wider and wider, and we switch it hats into lower return trend falling mode. Here's a silly little swing trade that turned into a much, 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 much longer term trade. Anyway, as I've said a thousand times, people complain about giving up over profits. And I tell them, you know, like a case like the ARLP, it's like, okay, I, so you made $14,000 round numbers overall on the trade, or on, on the actual trade. And then you made another, let's say $3,000 taking profits and dividends. Keep that $3,000 in profits and dividends and send me that $14,000 so you don't have to worry about that trade anymore. Just pretend that you just got your profit and then you happen to collect some little dividends and just forget about that trade altogether. You know, keep that little bit, send me the $14,000. And I haven't received a check yet, you know, but uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> So it's one of those things, you have to accept the fact that you're going to give up some open profits. So again, another one of those secrets is not a secret in its acceptance. Now, one thing I woke up thinking about, and I think about fairly often too, is that trading methodologies could really be boiled down to trend following or reversion to the mean. If anyone else has a, a, a different idea for another type of, of system or whatever, that fits outside of these, uh, leave a comment and, and let me know because maybe I'm missing something. But for the most part, I think you're either a trend follower or you're trading reversion to the mean. Now, each methodology will have very, will have its own very similar nuances. So a lot of trend following is going to look alike. A lot of like if you have a trend following mechanical system, a lot of those systems are going to look alike. And you have to learn those nuances and accept those nuances if you're gonna trade them. Now, as I often joke, reversion to the mean trading will work until it don't. The beauty of reversion to the mean, if you're actually trading it, is that, oh boy, I'm I'm making a little, making a little, making a little, making a little, my accuracy is 80, 90%. This is fun, this is great. But then all of a sudden, you get smashed. And that has that anthill characteristic. Ants make a, a big mound, little by little by little by little, and all of a sudden, big footprint, takes them all out. The old commodity adage comes to mind, eat like a bird and defecate like an elephant. And that just means a lot of these floor traders would go out, new ones especially, go out and trade, 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 make a little, 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 and then take a huge loss. They give up weeks, months, or even blow up on a trade. Now, the, the, the volatility, I was thinking about tigers with volatility, but it, it it makes for a better example with reversion to the mean type of trading. You don't know the the animal to deal with, 
so to speak. And it always amazes me, these dumbasses have these exotic animals, such as a tiger, and the tiger one day eats them, okay? I'm not laughing, I'm not being shot in Friday. It's like, you dumbass. <laughs> you, you have a very large carnivore and you're keeping it as a pet. That's just a bad idea. And this poor little girl here, these, uh idiot parents doing this but anyway i i, I didn't want to research any more of these uh dipshits but i'd be willing to bet that out of four of them one of them probably is no longer on this earth and i think uh child services needs to pick up this little kid <laughs> before he makes a snack out of her anyway so you need to know the nature of the beast you're dealing with and and i wish there was a way and i've been thinking about this lately and and it's just not enough time in a day but I need to probably do a better job onboarding people. And I think I'm like doing that when I do these shows each week, what to expect, okay? Don't expect to get rich overnight with a service. And if somebody tells you you can get rich overnight, then they're, they're FOS, okay? That's just not how it works. If there was a Holy Grail, I would have found it by now. And maybe somebody in the organization that I'm part of would have found it too, because there's a lot of more, a lot of smarter people than I am in the organization. I'm just a trend following moron, right? And, and AAPTA is what I'm talking about. Anyway, long term trend following will have abysmal drawdowns and low accuracy, okay? Short term trend following will have higher accuracy and lower drawdowns in general, but unfortunately, it doesn't make enough longer term. You still need that occasional home run to pay for everything. And that's one thing that you have to accept. And you have to accept that you could have to chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it. And then, you know, make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, maybe even lose, 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 as I'll talk about in a few minutes. And live with it as long as your methodology is conceptually correct. And then eventually you hit it out of the park. So I just spent a lot of time telling you all trend following looks the same. Why is my trend following better? Well, I think it's better because I take a hybrid approach to the money management. As I just said over and over again, we are in for a short-term trade, which is more likely to happen than a long-term trade, but we're willing to stick around to capture that occasional long-term home run should it occur. And that position triggered, I forget, I think it's 20, it was late, late, 2000 i think i recommended it for like the last day of the year if memory serves or right around there and it triggered early in uh not 2000 2000 and 20 and it triggered early in 2021 so about a year and a half on that trade so far now in addition to my hybrid approach to money management i think the other thing not not to be uh cocky because a lot of times it doesn't work, right? But I do think that by working hard and looking at a couple thousand charts each day, like Papa John, you know, better ingredients, better pizza, I think my kind of my best offense for my money management, my best defense, excuse me, my best defense for money management is a good offense. So I go through, like I said, a couple thousand stocks every night. And as one of my clients said, he, he said, well, it's kind of caught, not taught. And I do think I could I do a good job teaching the, the the stock picking if I say so myself. For instance, in the Facebook group, somebody's looking at a stock, I'm like, looks great, good setup. You got a mountain of overhead supply right above the market. So that's something that's kind of mechanical. You could just make that a little checkbox. But yeah, there is a bit of an art to it. It does have to be caught, but with experience over time, especially if you do a post-mortem on every trade after you get out of it, win, lose, or draw, and look back at that as if you're seeing it for the first time. And you're going to be amazed. A lot of times you're going to think, what the hell was I thinking? But that's okay because you're going to get better and better and better. I feel like uh, this tonight's like dead horse night. <laughs> I thought I had all this new material. It's like, save as it ever was, right? Save as it ever was. One thing I was thinking about too is I treat cash as an asset class. And that means that I'm okay with sitting on cash. If there's nothing to do, then do nothing. I've actually have clients that that really just, it, it makes them crazy sitting on cash. It's like, 
No, that's great. Keep your powder dry and wait, 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 wait until you can't stand it, until the setup looks so great. You just walk over there. It's almost like the Jimmy Rogers trade. He just waits until his money line in the corner, walks over, picks it up. Well, it's not quite that easy, but sometimes it amazes me that it can be that easy, provided, of course, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait. Most people in this microwave society, as I've said a thousand times, aren't that patient. Now, last week, I talked about these are the ones we've been waiting for. And based on several big winners in the portfolio. And like I said last week and said earlier, I'm either going to bore you to death or you're going to have a string of losers, as Murphy would have it, when you first come into the service. And by the way, if you want to get a feel for that, okay, go in and look at the archives, www.davelander.com slash archives to see the win, the lose, and the draw, and all that, and get a feel for things first. I know it's a little different once money is on the line, but like I said, a lot of new clients come in, they lose a few times, they quit, or they get bored, you know? They'll go, this guy didn't told me, this guy says I shouldn't do anything, and it's been a month now, and, and you know what? Knock yourself out, go out and do something, but I bet if conditions aren't conducive and I'm not telling you to do anything and I'm not personally doing anything, then you better find some really, 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 really good stocks or markets to trade. But again, you know, they get bored, they quit. I call that African queen syndrome and African queen, they were like almost to the ocean or the lake or whatever they're trying to get to. And then they just gave up and then the camera pans back and they're like, couple hundred yards away. They almost made it, but a lot of people give up right before they hit the payday. And that's just trend following. And that's what it's, it's like the hokey pokey. That's what trend following is all about. Now, again, I'm a big proponent of trend trading. The only way you could ever make money on a trade is capture a trend, right? And I think it's the best way to generate longer term wealth. You're not going to generate income trend trading, okay? So you need to get that notion out of your head. But you might be able to sit in a stock for a year or two and get 20,000 or 40,000 or let's say 20% of your entire account off that one stock. That is possible, okay? Trend trading requires the exercising the fine art of doing nothing. Was that Calvin Hobbes, if memory serves, I think? While waiting for an in trades, okay? So you get to trade. It doesn't do anything. It kind of comes back, comes back, comes back, or drops, 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 drops. You give up, what happens? It takes off the next day. Now, most can't handle the nuances, and they go off to chase rainbows. Uh, George, you stuck it out. I'm proud of you, man. George has been with me for about a year, I guess, maybe. Probably right before some of those big, huge winners I'm always talking about, unfortunately. But he stuck it out through thick and thin, and 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 you know what? He's he's doing pretty good. Last time we uh, we talked, uh, he said better than he than he that he's ever done. And he's he's picking his own stocks too, in addition to mine. Now, on the flip side, it's a success could be worse than losing or waiting to win. Now we talked about this again last week, and that's the same thing. As I've said, I've seen many people do stupid things because they think they're just gonna keep printing money when they when they enter the printing money phase. What they don't realize is how much it takes to to get to that point in time, the the patience, the waiting, the getting knocked out of a few losing trades, and just waiting and waiting and waiting, and then all of a sudden, bam, you hit the right cycle. Well, if somebody comes in on the right cycle, they, they think I'm God, they think they're, it did worse, they think they're God, okay? And they're like, this is easy. Anybody can do this, you know. Unfortunately, it's not that easy, but it's it's also not that difficult if you boil it all down and think about it and you go in and look at all the trades you picked and all the trades you lost on. Again, in that postmortem, you're gonna find a lot of those trades in the future you probably wouldn't take because there were so many obvious things wrong with them. Now, guess what? Sometimes you have a beautiful looking setup and you lose money on it. As I often say, Annie Duke coined the phrase resulting. You gotta be really careful with resulting in trading. Yeah, the bottom line is the bottom line, but if you did something stupid or if you pick up a crappy stock or whatever, and you got lucky, you have to separate that luck from skill. You can't consider that skill. And that's the biggest problem that kills a lot of people 
in trading. Now, again, like I said last week, I really think the archives are a valuable resource. It might bore you to death, but go in and look at those archives and get a feel for things. Okay, Dave's in a bear market. What's he doing? Well, he's not doing a whole lot. Maybe a short or two every now and then. For the most part, he's sitting on his hands. Hey, we're in a choppy market. Hey, he's still sitting on his hands, you know? And then all of a sudden, it's like things begin to improve. Well, what's Dave doing? Well, he's following the trend. And by the way, again, the only way to make money is to capture a trend. If you buy here and sell here, that's a trend, as I often say. All right, Crypto Corner, if you guys want to, if you have any individual crypto you want to talk about, I did want to show you Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin has bottomed, but I probably should have used the word bottoming. It could be a process. We could even return to the old lows and sit there for a while. But the 30-day EMA really amazes me. It's really kind of a cool thing. I know you want to party with me. But you can see, we look at the Landry light, meaning the highs are less than the moving average. You can see in the little illustrated at the bottom, or indicator if you want to call it that. But it just tells you what's happening in the chart. So you can see you had about 30 or 40 days of downside Landry light. And then we did kiss the moving average, and then we had a little bit more Landry light, and then the market began to bottom out. In more recent times, Bitcoin kept trying to take off, but it kept coming right back to its moving average. So you can see we're going from green to zero to maybe one, like this day here would be one, okay, negative one, I should say. So I just want to show you this kind of, it's not getting any traction. Now, if I back, let me just back those drawings out for one second show you something real quick so you can see i've got my parameter set at 10 that just happened to be the number that i told the um, program and let it default to but you can see that we haven't gotten 10 days of upside landry light in a while but you can see back here we had many many days of downside landry light 30 or 40 or even more maybe 50 days in that downtrend so 30 day ema Lows greater than the moving average, that's upside Landry light. Green down here, green is good. As far as that speak, green good. <laughs> anyway, all right, we're gonna hop into crypto real quick. And if there's anything you guys wanna discuss here, let me know. As I said a thousand times, my wife said my starting this Facebook group was the best thing I've ever done. And one reason is, or the main reason is, trading is a lonely sport, and it's good to see the trials and tribulations of, of other people. And we've got a really good group, and uh, some of you guys, I think, have been with me for over a decade. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And, and some of you new guys come in, provided you want to learn, and, and you know, shocking that not everybody wants to learn, you know? <laughs> but that's another story altogether. But provided you want to learn, a lot of uh, you guys that have been with me forever will chime in and really help out. And, and I appreciate that. I really do. All right. Let me shift gears real quick and we'll get the, um, we'll get what you would call it uh, set up. Crypto. Okay. Any, uh, okay. Ethereum. We'll take a look at that. Anything else? You know, the markets, trading view. Oh, by the way, um, we're almost within 10% of the 50-week closing high in the P's, and I'll show you that in just one second. Let me get the sharing fixed. Okay. Here we have Bitcoin, and you can see, again, this downside Landry light, okay? Green, a little red, green, 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 you know, back to zero, back to zero. So it's just chopping along. I wouldn't rush out and buy it at this juncture, but I do think it's still trying to to bottom out. Let's take a look at Ethereum for George. Yeah, Ethereum looks a lot better than, than Bitcoin does right now. So you had, let's see. It took off, it pulled back to 30, took off, and you've got nice Landry light in here. In fact, let me show you this real quick. We are, is this a weekly? Yeah, we're within 10% of the all-time closing high. So two lows above the 50-week moving average would be a buy on the TFM 10% system. Now, let me just show you. We'll take a look at Ethereum over here. 
and I want to show you the Landry light on that one. Where is she? I know it's in here. Here we go. Okay, let's put in, oh, it automatically came up. All right, so like I was just saying, you got lots of Landry light. You got 22 bars of Landry light. So looks like the trend has turned on this one and looks like we're in an uptrend for now at least. Now you probably also want to back the chart out a little bit, start looking at resistance. Well, you don't have a whole lot of resistance until way up here. So uh, George, I'm kind of bullish on Ethereum and I think it might be worth a, a shot, you know, just a small little, excuse me, well, crypto, you don't want to bet, bet the form. So maybe go in, take a little small position when it takes off. Best part of our week is you're teaching. Oh, wow, George. <laughs> George, you need to get a life, buddy. <laughs> no, thank you, man. That's that's uh, that's great. That's great. Doing better since I turned off my PL screen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I try not to look at the equity too much because boy, that'll that'll kill you. But you know, I'm human, so she was waking up in here. We had the mother of all days. I got an alert. I was sleeping. I think what had happened though. But then, unfortunately, it came right back in. This, uh, boy, I miss this one. I played this bad boy way back in the day, and that was wonderful. Even bought me a Sheeb t-shirt. This Eloin thing, uh, Eloin, Eloin, easy for me to say, sometimes could take off, but it's going sideways too. Let's just do a sort based on percentage change. This, this thing just kind of shoots up every now and then. You can't really trade it. Let's see if there's anything that's really taken off. There's nothing that's got me too excited right now. Every now and then I'll get on one and flip out a little bit, but I haven't caught any trends in crypto in a while, and I haven't really been focusing on it too much. If you go back and watch last fall's presentations, I was all over it because it was moving, but I need to remember to continue to do my homework even though there's there hasn't been a lot here, but it has been waking up a little bit. You can see by some of these numbers when you sort by the percentage change. And again, when you go through these, keep an eye on that 30 EMA because that can keep you out of a lot of trouble. Let me just sort by just the opposite real quick. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. Okay, let's see. Why did they not give me the real negatives? Yeah, take a look at like this crap, right? Okay. So the 30 EMA would have kept you out of trouble for a long, 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 long time. So again, that's my little friend. I keep talking about it. All right, let's shift gears and get into stocks. Unless there's any more crypto you guys want to look at. And you know, when crypto heats up, you know, y'all remind me in the group to to pay attention. So that's another thing that helps me is, is uh, more than one set of eyes looking at things, and that uh, really helps. Like. Um, I got the alert to Sheeb. I did have an alert set there, but uh, there was there wasn't nothing to do. But I was glad that John put out a post to remind me of it. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. Well, here's bonds since we're already here. You can see bonds are kind of bottoming out. Kind of looks like a head and shoulder bottom. I wouldn't trade off that. I wouldn't get too excited about that. But this is kind of good. We're not in a runaway rates going through the roof environment, at least on the long end of the curve. Now, maybe the short end is is uh, inverted or something. That's a whole nother problem to worry about. But I usually don't worry about those things. I just look at the charts, right? If it gets stopped, it gets stopped. UUP, that's a dollar. Had a really good day today. That might be putting a little pressure on Bitcoin. They're not always directly correlated, but sometimes they are. They are. Let's take a look at the P's. S&P 500 has been improving as of late. Where is my little friend on here? Let's put that 30 in there. Oh, a lot of you guys were talking about the 200. Yeah, we, we went up and tagged the 200, okay? As you can see, right there. Let's put the 30 in here. And again, that 30 EMA, I'll tell you what, I'm liking it more and more and more and more, especially when combined with Landry Light. So you can see, look at the Landry light. Look at the Landry light, it's huge. <laughs> it's a pretty good run, right? Now, longer term, still could be some problems, but we seem to be getting there day by day, improving day by day is what I mean by getting there. So P's are looking pretty good. 
I wouldn't rush out and start kissing each other just yet, but we've caught a few trends here and there in individual stocks. We get stopped out, we get stopped out, right? I know, easier said than done. But you can see nice little uptrend in NASDAQ too. It's pushed into some of this overhead supply. So far, so good there. Russell 2000 has gotten through a lot of overhead supply too. Still has a little bit more to get through. Kind of, uh, well, it's more than flat field today, up a little bit. But you can see nice trend, nice uptrend remains intact. One thing to watch, let me just make sure this is exponential. Oh, it's still simple. Well, it, it works for simple moving average too. <laughs> Okay, that looks a little better. A 30 EMA. I was wondering why there was so much lag in that. But if you went back to the P's and everything else we talked about, same sort of pattern there. Lots and lots and lots of Landry light. So Rusty, Rusty's looking pretty good. The other thing to look at with these indices is persistency. And mathematically, persistency is equivalent to linear regression. I just like to draw a line through as many bars as possible when it comes to looking at the chart. And you can see that the line intersects nearly all of them. I think if I fiddle around with it, I'd probably get them to intersect most all of them. So that's a very important concept when it comes to markets is persistency. Energy still look like a big top, but they keep plowing higher. So pretty soon they'll have negated that, that top look. And if they do continue higher after making such a ominous looking top, then it could be a real huge move higher. Now, don't make any bets on that. You know me, I'm a shorter term guy. I wait for some sort of pullback and set up along the way. And it's it's nothing that I trade would set up anytime soon in energies, but you can see they certainly are improving. Most areas have been improving as of late, just randomly picking a couple. There's banks, nice little thrust higher, as you can see. M and C got through all this overhead supply. Transports are kind of all over the place, but they've kind of gone straight up in here. As of late, software looking pretty good. Multi-month highs kind of bottomed out. So far, so good. Now, what concern is this bottom is at a very high level, okay, as opposed to multi-multi-year lows, but that's okay. Let's just see what happens in here. And I think we can catch some pretty good trends back toward the old highs, even if the old highs don't get taken out. Yeah, if you want to, uh, you want me to take a look at some individual stocks, you can go ahead and do so now. I'm pretty much done with the market analysis. Let's just take a look at retail real quick. Let's see if I can find this other one here, XRT. Retail was off to the races a few days ago, kind of imploded yesterday and down a little bit today, but that's not the end of the world. So far, so good. It looks like a bottom is in place in retail too. And let's take a look at the semiconductors. Semiconductors bounce a little bit today. I like to see them get past these prior peaks in here, but in general, they worked their way higher as of late. GTLB for... George, yeah, I like it. I do. Um, do you know what they do? I'm just kind of curious. It's, I think you might be able to find something slightly more speculative, but that looks pretty good. I mean, it's a little, it's a little wide and loose in here. The momentum could be a little bit better, but I hear you. It's kind of a big picture bottom, kind of, it's kind of sloppy, but it's kind of a, a bow tie. And a cup and handle, and it's pulled back. So I'm going to give you an okay on that one, or certainly a not bad. It's not jumping out at me as fantastic, but I can't I can't really pick it apart too much, other than a little wide and loose trading here and there. I'd like to see in a stock that's kind of wide and loose like this. I'd like to see some even more persistency and even more thrust higher. If this was a little cleaner, like if this cup was a little further down, then this thrust here would look a little bit more impressive. Okay, CMPS. I go to usually just go to um, Yahoo Finance and then try to avoid the clickbait, you know, <laughs> getting there. <laughs> Guess who's returning to Sex Island? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Better check it out. CMPS. Yeah, okay. Great, great segue, John. So take a look at this stock versus that stock, okay? Same sort of pattern happening, cup and handle, but look at CMPS versus GitLab. A little bit cleaner, okay? A little bit smoother, nice little thrust higher, pull back. I'd like to see a, I'd like to see a few more wide range bars in here, but it looks pretty good, okay? So 
yeah, I think I'll give you a high five on that one and stop just short of a high five on the on the GitLab. But yeah, uh, Yahoo Finance, by the way, is usually where I find out what they do. And, and in the background here, you can see what sector they're in too. So that helps sometimes. Position six, you have six positions that are working? CLH for Sam, hey Sam. Uh, this one's been catching my eye because it's making new highs, but it's it's kind of railroad tracking in here, you know, up and down, up and down, and up and down. A little Jackie Mason uh, action. Also, you can see it's kind of just getting back to the prior peak in here. Now, if you're at low levels, I like these cup formations. I don't like them as much at high levels. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, John said he had to compete with Geo. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for an entry. No, I wouldn't. I, I'd pass on that. I think you could find there's so much better out there. Um, you know, look at the Landry list tonight. There's there's quite a there's a half a dozen ones on there that that I would choose above this one. I don't know why you'd want to get in this one. I mean, yeah, it's trending, but it looks like it's it's hitting a little trouble at the old peak in here, a little double top action. I, I think I'd pass on that one. Just because there's a lot, there's a lot better out there. I mean, I'd pass anyway, but I think there's better out there. But yeah, it's trending, sure. WSA. Yeah, this one looks okay. You know, airlines. Uh, my favorite strategy for airlines are wait for them to go up and then sell them, <laughs> short them. But uh, but yeah, why not? Uh, this looks okay. Kind of got the cup and handle. This is kind of a TKO type of move here. Looks like you have okay volume, not tremendous. You might have to watch it, see if it gets a little thin here and there. But for the most part, it's probably also a bow tie. I lost, I haven't gotten used to this new TC. Yeah, see, there's your bow tie there. But the only problem is, and the reason why you're not seeing this on my list, is you do have a lot of overhead supply to deal with. And maybe if it got way up there, that'd be a good problem to have. But I, I would pass on that one. Okay, the stock would GitLab is develop, develop in development environment for programmers. That doesn't, not sure what that what that is. They build cubicles. They build cubicles. <laughs> this one I like. Um, if it's not on my Landry list tonight, it should be. And the only reason it's probably not, I can almost guarantee you this is in my momentum list because I recognize this stock. The only thing is it needs a little bit more pullback. But yeah, I've been watching this one in my momentum list. And it doesn't have too much overhead supply to deal with. So I think it's okay. But yeah, keep an eye on that one for sure. Okay, AFRM, we just looked at that one, right? Oh, no, we're looking at it now. Okay, all right, any more? Going once, going twice. Well, obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be here. Thank you so much. Anything unanswered, daviddavelander.com. Feel free to leave a comment below. I do read and answer any comments that need answering if you're watching this on YouTube, obviously. And uh, join us live next week, davelander.com slash webinar. <laughs> uh, you have a lot. I'm sure you have a lot, Sam. But thank you. Thank you for, for coming. I appreciate it so much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. And may the trend be with you.